Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to be with you always, the spirit of truth whom the world cannot accept because it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. In a little while the world will no longer see me but you will see me, because I live and you will live. On that day you will realize that I am in the Father, and you are in me, and I in you. Whoever has my commandments and observes them is the one who loves me. And whoever loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and reveal myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. For those of you who thought that Chris was going to speak, well, too bad. And he called me a while back. I said, you sure you want me to speak at your first mass as a deacon? Because that's your role. But anyways, he said, I'd be much more relaxed. So he may have been relaxed, but I wasn't. <laughs> to Michelle and Mr. and Mrs. Paul and all of you who have come today, the Fortin clan and all of you, parishioners of St. Maurice, Father Mo for always welcoming me in season and out of season. And of course, to Chris. Receive the gospel of Christ, whose herald you have become. Believe what you read, teach what you believe, and practice what you teach. Those words are from the rite of ordination for the deacon. As I was reflecting on these yesterday, many different thoughts flooded my mind. I thought of your time, Chris, as a teacher at Holy Family Academy, where you were so well loved and respected. As an evangelist and apologist here at St. Marie's, when I talked you into taking this job, Many times we said, I said, Chris, why don't you take the job of evangelist? I'm so glad you did. And now as a teacher of religion at Bishop Brady, in a real sense, you've been preparing for the words that were spoken to you yesterday. You are a man who believes what you read. You teach it eloquently so that others might believe it. And in your way of teaching, you have an approach that is non-threatening, always inviting, certainly in sync with what John Paul II and now Pope Francis speak of in the new evangelization. The words of today's reading from Peter, always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you a reason for your hope, but do it with generosity 
and gentleness. That's been your mark for the many years that I've known you. You've done it well. You've expressed the Lord to many and invited and challenged us to know and love Jesus Christ. As a Vincentian, you have been, you have been able to penetrate the hearts of the poor, the marginalized, and to familiarize yourself with the deacon's role in caring for the poor, and so accepting a ministry that calls forth his leadership and charity. Words again from that who assumes that role. I mention the Vincentians because, Chris, again, I remember your tireless efforts with that organization and how over the years you have penetrated the hearts of the poor. You're a man who says very little at times, but your actions speak volumes. Your ability to be generous and to always be ready to listen is a great gift. For years, and the word has been penetrating in your heart and soul. And again, I saw that at the altar, when for so many years you not only elected here at St. Marie's, but oftentimes you would minister at the altar at St. Joseph's before going to class. I saw it time and time again when you came into the Eucharistic Chapel in the afternoons in the midst of busy schedules to listen to the Lord's voice. I've seen it time and time again when you were willing in the midst of your busy schedule to always take time to pray with those who were in need, even traveling to Montreal year after year with the men of St. Joseph and providing for them a powerful example of what it means to be a man who believes in God and who is willing to, to live out that gospel without compromise. Again, from 1 Peter in today's second reading, sanctify the Lord in your heart. You have done that. That's what gave you the impetus to begin this long journey towards the diaconate because you have been able to put the Lord where he should be, at the top of the list. Now, the deacon may administer the sacraments of baptism, witness the sacrament of marriage, preach and lead the mourners in prayer at wakes. I couldn't think of a better way for you to live out your marital commitment than through your lovely wife, Michelle, who has been by your side for the last four years during your training and for so many years from the moment that you first met at Steubenville. She's been a blessing to you. And I know that because and through that marital commitment and covenant, I am assured that you'll be able to help so many people, not only in marriage preparation, but by the example in which the two of you live out your vocation in such a beautiful and humble way. Michelle, I take great pride in being here today and being able to thank you, because without you, this would not have been possible. So thank you for being at Chris's right side and for encouraging him throughout these four years. That's what the role of the deacon's wife must be and you have shown time and time again that you are indeed a gift to the church. So thank you, Michelle. Okay, that's enough, enough. Because Michelle hates this, and she will never forgive me. She's never coming back 
to my house for dinner. <laughs> now, Chris, I want to end with this. It's a little story about the legend of St. Christopher. I'm not sure. I'm sure you know it because you're a man of, of uh, great intellect and great ability. But St. Christopher, you know, who's, his, the name means Christ bearer. St. Christopher, for those of you who may not know, uh, the medal of St. Christopher is attributed, obviously, to him and worn by so many Catholics and Orthodox. It's the story of a tall, robust man, some say he was a giant, who once served a great king. Seeing the king cross himself at the mention of the devil, Christopher left his service to seek out Satan, who was obviously stronger than the king who feared him. Christopher found a band of criminals, and among them a man claimed to be the devil. Christopher offered his services to the, de to the man, but not for long, because soon, as Christopher made the sign of the cross, the devil began to flee. Christopher realized that the devil feared Christ, so he left the devil's service and came upon a hermit in prayer. The hermit told Christopher that in order to serve Jesus, he could pray and fast, but Christopher did not think that that would suit him. So the hermit said to him, well, I've got another job. I'm suggesting that because of your size, you might well help people across a dangerous river. So Christopher did this for quite a time, carrying people across a dangerous river. Well, one day there was a small child who needed to be carried across the river. So Christopher picked him up, put him on his shoulder, begins to cross the river. And as he's crossing the river, the child becomes heavier and heavier. And finally he turns to the child, he says, why are you so heavy? The child says, because I'm Jesus, and I carry the sins of many. Christopher, Christ-bearer and giant. In a real sense, you're being called upon as a deacon to carry the trials of many people. You'll carry many to the waters of baptism. You'll carry many who weep. You'll listen to their crying. You'll have to hold parents at times when they've lost their child. You'll have to be there to mourn at wakes and at funeral services in which you'll be able to participate and officiate. At all those moments, you may not feel like a giant, but realize, Christopher, that you're going to be carrying upon your shoulders and within your heart the thoughts, the prayers, the hopes, and the dreams of many, many people. As you began your ministry, I pray that Christopher, this child bearer, this Christ bearer, may carry you. And that as you carry Christ, as he carries you, that you may often look into his eyes as he looks into yours with the promise of hope, with the promise of a ministry filled with glory and at times, I'm sure, pain. But in the end, if you're willing to carry Christ as you've done so well for so many years, no matter how heavy the task is, Christ in the end, uh, Chris, in the end, you will succeed. You will be that giant for so many of us who look for a model of Christianity, a model of Christ. We want to hear his voice. We want to be touched by his hands. We want to be embraced by his love. Chris, be that man. Be that man for us. So as you begin your, your office as a deacon, as an ordained deacon for the church, I know that I speak for all of us as I wish you the very best. As a giant, as a man, as a deacon, as a husband, and as a friend. God bless you, Chris.
Oh, man. 